Koinonia, a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. Go ahead and pray in the Spirit. Someone pray. Shut up, Shut up, Shut up, Shut up, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One more prayer. Father, quicken my understanding by your spirit. Quicken my understanding. Are you praying? quicken my understanding the grace to comprehend the grace to understand he told the utopian you know understandest what thou readest are you praying shabalakato sabra degede baladabosh shepratez kabaratu jali hasane bakata prosidatia Quicken my understanding. Shala paruta sada bradiki di balalash. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Every, every time we gather, please understand that every gathering here is a feast of light. And it is also a feast of the bread, the meal of the Spirit. Hallelujah. In biology physically speaking we grow to the degree to which we are well nourished there are children that are malnourished being malnourished does not necessarily mean you are not being fed it means that you are not fed in a way that supplies all the nutrients that your body requires is that true someone can keep eating yet the person is malnourished but there is something called balanced diet is a diet is just that attention was given to the diet what is too much was reduced what should be there but it's not in the quantity that should be there see one of the assignments of a man of god in building people is not just to look for what to teach it's not just to look for what to say you must stay with the holy ghost and continue to vet what is about to come out are we together remember the master chef is the holy spirit we are waiters we receive the bread we receive the meal from this principal chef called the holy spirit and you will know when is a meal that he prepared because the spirit of god is god when there is a corruption in the quality of the food then it means that someone interrupted with the formula and the menu so i'm saying this for a reason listen i want you that every time you come here truly rejoice and be glad in your heart because you are not opening your ears and your spirit to something that would destroy you 
they are not cunningly devised fables you are coming to learn to receive something that will cause your destiny to reflect the life and the power of god it is risky to come and sit down under a grace under a ministry under a platform that you are not sure your heart is open to receive but you are careful because it it looks like you have to go through the rigor of editing almost everything hallelujah yes but when the work has been done your heart is at peace to receive because you know that this meal was not prepared by a man is only served by a man the meal came from heaven the bread that the angels ate was not made from a bakery on earth men served it but it came from heaven the remaining loaves and bread were not made from earth only five were made from earth I believe those five were still among the 12 left none of them ate anything that belonged to that young boy it was only a tool for service to create multiplication so listen i want you to trust what you are hearing they are not cunningly devised fables don't allow the devil cheat you and tell you okay let me hear i hope i will no 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 the integrity of god is upon this that you hear and if you will listen to it it will turn you to a sign and a wonder can we pray one more prayer let your word oh god turn me tonight to a sign and a wonder and let my destiny show it let it turn me to a sign and a wonder Turn me to a sign, turn me to a wonder. Turn me tonight to a flame of fire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good evening. God bless you. Please be seated. Now, tonight is very serious and we're back to our series teach us to pray part three please listen tonight listen with your ears listen with your spirit don't be distracted he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit say i was very touched hearing the testimony of the precious people that stood in here you see let me tell you our destinies are at the mercy of not only god but the truth we are exposed to are we together now see the one that now ran away he's not going to collect his um his his certificate his what his discharge certificate because when people collect their discharge certificate what happens to them they run mad ah, who is he that said a thing and it comes to pass was that rule not made by a man It says the sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night ordinances that came from men and their partnership with the realm of the spirit truth will give you stability truth will take away fear truth will take away uncertainty the Bible admonishes us, Paul speaking to the church in Ephesus, to walk circumspectly. The word circumspect means accurately. That means the more you grow spiritually, take away error from your life. Take away mistakes. You should be able to master the laws of the spirit. Listen to me. As far as walking in this earth is concerned, to a point by the spirit where most of your life is engaged with understanding and accuracy your lifetime is too small for unnecessary experiments you must trust god to minimize unnecessary experiments work with understanding hallelujah praise the lord teach us to pray part three 
please do well to get part one and two last week we took a little break to just touch on something and we're back we have done a lot and i would not want to go into all that we need as much time as we can get tonight to do justice to this final part of the series we said in part one that every believer is a king and a priest and that the priestly ministry of believers require prayer are we together we spoke about the fact that the house of god according to scripture is also the house of prayer for all nations and we dealt with the reasons why we should pray we said that prayer must be taught you don't just learn how to pray by praying alone you learn how to pray accurately by having the understanding that sponsors accurate prayer part two matthew chapter six the bible um challenged us according to the words of the disciples they said teach us to pray i told you that the disciples were not prayerless people they were people who prayer did not work for them teach us to pray men we have tried but we used a formula that was not producing the result we desired are we together so it was not an issue of prayerlessness it was an issue of accuracy in prayer and we examined matthew chapter 6 our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name to explain what jesus meant is very powerful please get it make sure that you listen to it and now we're at part three and we'll deal with a number of things and pray hallelujah praise the lord there are three things the course curriculum for tonight just three subtopics and we're done number one we're going to be looking at dimensions of prayer we'll be looking at dimensions that prayer captures number two we're going to be looking at the rules of engagement there are principles in prayer that we must understand and then number three we will wrap up as god grants grace with principles of spiritual legislation we need to know how to decree how to enforce how to create realities the creative dimension of prayer how we use prayer to shape things how we use prayer to influence cities how we use prayers to manipulate outcomes praise the lord so please listen let your heart be open in jesus name psalm 65 verse 2 unto thou that answers prayer shall all flesh come psalm 65 and verse 2 that is our major uh, okay O thou that hearest prayer unto thee shall all flesh come there are not many people that hear prayer we settled that in part one there are many people who are being prayed unto but there is only one who hears prayer please understand you can pray to a stone you can pray to a molten image you can pray to your uncle you can make petitions to all kinds of people but the bible settles the matter of answered prayer oh thou is not a team it's not a committee only god can answer prayer apostle but our fathers in the village pray and answers come it is true they really do not pray they only fraternize with spirits who take advantage of the provisions that are allocated in the realm of the spirit and by it they manipulate possibilities in the earth realm are we together now yes you know idols do not answer prayer because you cannot fellowship with them you know stones and rocks and water and all these things the possibility for fellowship is not there that personification that allows for fellowship is not there and there are spirit entities that are at the back of these things that serve as mediums or the priests that mediate between you and the supposed gods but let me tell you the truth there is only one god that can answer prayer 
and it is unto that god we are mandated that all flesh should come praise the lord dimensions of prayer <clears throat> there are many of them but we are considering three for this series it is important for us to know the various aspects of our lives that prayer is the key for that captures that prayer captures in as much as it is true that prayer is not the only key but prayer is a very major key and it's important for us to understand the dimensions of prayer in the life of a believer that in performing your priesthood as a believer you must understand the dimensions of prayer number one the first dimension of prayer is for fellowship and growth write it down please prayer attempts to sponsor the life and the power as it relates to fellowship and growth that means when you pray as a believer one dimension of prayer is the prayer that is targeted towards fellowship and growth are we together we grow spiritually primarily by the ministry of prayer and the word primarily there are other auxiliary support systems two of them basically in fact the standard procedure for spiritual growth in scripture is prayer the word fellowship and service these four a believer cannot grow outside of these four provisions maybe you need to write it down so you don't forget believers only grow in this kingdom based on their interaction with these four dimensions generally speaking the ministry of prayer number one the ministry of the word scripture number two the ministry of fellowship whether fellowship with god and fellowship with the brethren corporate fellowship the community lifestyle and then number four service that means you can know as a believer whether you are growing or not by checking whether you are actively engaging in these four dimensions if prayer is not working in your life you are not growing if you are not growing in the understanding of scripture you are not growing number three if you have been around for a long time and there is no part of your christian experience that is dedicated towards service then there is a dimension of growth you are not experiencing and finally fellowship we have fellowship with god and with men if you have fellowship with god alone you are still not growing are we together now yes i was glad when they said unto me come let us go to the house of the lord why am i teaching you all of these things because you see as you begin to grow spiritually it's important for you to not just act out of faith alone but your faith must grow into trust that means you have come to a point where you know the workings you should know why you are growing are we together now they shouldn't just say why are you growing and you say well i'm in koinonia and they feed me well spiritually that is true but that's not accurate enough you should be able to mentor people that means i should be able to hand over a believer that just got born again and i say sam train this person you shouldn't ask me what should i do it's an insult to your training are we together now if someone is handed over to you now and say please um pastor or prophet or brother or whoever you are mentor this person you should not sit down and then you are just lost and wondering okay what do i do now do you pray no 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 no. you already know the boundaries of growth are prayer the word fellowship and service that's it any other thing outside of these four jurisdictions is a total waste of time it will not contribute to your growth are we together yes 
so we're dealing with the dimension of fellowship and growth we've looked at luke chapter 9 please write i'll give you four scriptures luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29 the bible says as he prayed jesus now the bible says the fashion of his countenance changed transformation that comes through prayer remember i've taught you here that prayer is primarily a vehicle that attempts to change you not just change things change you it is the changed you that can now change things are we together now prayer changes the believer it changes you by opening your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit it changes you by pruning flesh in you it changes you by opening up doors for more of the anointing of the spirit the bible says the fashion of his countenance was altered number one and his raiment was white two things happen the fashion of his countenance and then his raiment was white and glistering that's glory there are we together now first corinthians chapter 14 from verse 2 and verse 4 first corinthians chapter 14 the bible says for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue now he's speaking he's talking about uh, praying in tongues but then it is still prayer that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto god so you can speak to god the bible says that's fellowship you speak to god for no man understandeth him how be it in the spirit he's praying in his room he's praying in a church but the bible says he's in the spirit and that in that spirit he's speaking mysteries unto god verse 4 he that speaketh in an unknown tongue does what edifieth himself edifieth himself growth you grow is an architectural word edifice that means that you are growing the foundation has been laid which is christ now the superstructure is being lifted so that is important for you to understand you neglect prayer you ignore prayer you will not grow you don't grow by inheritance you grow by engaging the forces allocated for the growth of the saints are we together jude 1 jude has only one chapter verse 20 the bible says but ye beloved are we together building up yourselves building what building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying so you build yourself when you pray the first dimension of prayer is as a vehicle and a tool for fellowship and growth building up yourselves on your most holy faith that means look at me if what made you afraid yesterday still makes you afraid today is because your prayer life is not growing are we together the mountain of yesterday that made me cry should not make me cry today again listen let me tell you you know that a believer is growing in the spirit when you get to a point where you can say like the psalmist the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of the same thing cannot continue to buffet you no three years ago you were three hours away from paying your rent and you were perturbed you were you were confused and scattered and disorganized three years later you should have seen god's faithfulness enough and grown spiritually to not allow the same issue make you afraid again are we together yes. you should not fear the same thing twice once is enough growth should take you out of the realm where that kind of fear should come he said do i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil he didn't say there will not be evil it is there but i will not be afraid of it evil does not have to be absent from your life for you to be free of fear i will fear no evil why for thou art with me not for the evil has gone thou art with me thy rod and thy staff two of them are sticks but they don't do the same thing 
thy rod and thy staff they comfort me praise the lord now first john chapter one we'll read from verse one to five or maybe just one to um yeah let's look at one to five apostle john is remember apostle john is god's beloved that was the man that understood fellowship he was the one who would lean on the chest of jesus to hear well what he was saying john was the one person who showed us the he showed us a glimpse of the power and victory over death theologically speaking he was banished to an isle called patmos on account of his testimony for christ and this man was thrown in boiling oil and he would not fry are we together they brought him out and did not know what to do with him and they banished him in that island and that was where he got the revelation of the book of revelation praise the lord so now every time john is teaching us on fellowship it's important to listen because he truly is the apostle of love and one who understood fellowship did you know that in all of the gospel it was the book of john that taught us on the ministry of the holy spirit extensively all other synoptics did not talk a eh, so much in fact it was matthew just spoke once or twice it was even mark that spoke a little about it luke gave us accounts of it was very detailed but for some reason these guys skipped the holy ghost but not john from 14 down to 16 john was detailing the ministry of the holy spirit are we together that which was from the beginning you notice that john always starts from the beginning i like john he teaches from the beginning john 1 verse 1 in the beginning first john 1 verse 1 the beginning again that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life verse 2 we're reading to 5 for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the father was manifest unto us uh-huh three that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that we that ye also may have what fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is you are fellowshipping with us but don't be deceived that we are just flesh our fellowship is with the father this john speaking now and with his son jesus christ so there is a possibility in the priesthood of the believer to use prayer as an instrument of fellowship with the father and fellowship with the son verse 4 and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full the last verse this is then the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that god is light and in him there is no darkness at all fellowship with the light fellowship with the light fellowship with the light as i engage in the word and as i pray i am in the earth realm but the bible says that fellowship is with the living personality not just scripture fellowship with the father and fellowship with the son hallelujah now look up please many believers think fellowship only starts when visions come many believers think you are not in fellowship when you pray until you see something or hear something or a wind pushes you while you are praying so while people approach prayer for fellowship they continue to be superstitious in their desire they are waiting for gold dust they are waiting for silver dust they are waiting to fall under the anointing they are waiting for just now those things can come those things do come but listen the basis of your confidence is the authority of scripture are we together that it does not matter what happens to my flesh in as much as my understanding interprets it that every time i engage in prayer i am fellowshipping with the father and with the son apostle i finished my prayer i did not feel anything scripture cannot be broken see because if you sit down and you are waiting for visions and experiences and prophecy and word of knowledge alone now let me tell you the truth 
it is almost impossible for you to have a rich prayer life are we together without one or more of these experiences accompanying intense times of prayer usually they will come they are the things that follow his presence but they are not the basis for believing that he came is someone learning now there are people who have a very strong prophetic inclination they can say in jesus name and they are out of their body it doesn't mean they are prayerful no they are not prayerful it's just that the equipping and the wiring within them towards the prophetic are we together and towards prophetic experiences will give allowance for these interactions so you come now and say in jesus name and while you are praying at a point you get frustrated and stop and say lord show me something now encourage me give me a vision give me a dream there is nowhere in the bible where your growth is tied to your seeing things in scripture no your growth is tied to the degree to which you conform to the image and the character of the christ and your growth is tied to the degree listen carefully to which you understand the mysteries of the kingdom that culminates to your walking in dominion are we blessed but then it's important for you to know that one dimension of prayer is a dimension that provides for fellowship and growth many believers do not understand that there is a dimension for fellowship and growth and it is dangerous if you do not know this because that then means that you cannot position your heart by faith to believe and know that i'm fellowshipping with the father most times people think that the moment we go to pray is all about binding it's all about casting are we together and warfare while it is true that these are dimensions captured in prayer they are not the only dimensions if your prayer life is only full of binding and casting then you may be casting demons truly but the richness that comes with that koinonia the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship fellowship hallelujah let's hurry up number two the second dimension of prayer is a dimension of prayer that allows for obtaining promises and making requests take note the first dimension of prayer is for fellowship and growth the second dimension of prayer is obtaining promises and making requests that means that there is a dimension that prayer the role that prayer plays as far as obtaining promises and making requests is concerned hebrews chapter 11 and verse 33 the bible tells us promises can be obtained it can become your own hallelujah who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises not just that they were taught it's a popular word many of you who like to play with hebrew and greek words the word obtained is the word katalambano it means to not only possess but to make it your own are we together now obtain promises that means it is and it is true from scripture but i make it my experience obtain promises the bible is full of promises my brothers and my sisters genesis to revelation is full of promises and that in prayer men and women can obtain promises i can take what is written in scripture and make it my experience that means the fact that it is a promise for you does not mean you have it listen 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 this is where i want you to pay attention to both the things i'm saying and the ones i'm not saying because many believers think that just because you find it in scripture and maybe quote it it's yours no sir promises are obtained obtained to become your own 
and upon mount zion he says there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the sons of jacob shall possess their possession it is their possession but it's not in their hands yet their possession are we together now obtain promises mark chapter 11 23 and 24 is god helping someone tonight 23 and 24 that means the dimension of prayer that is allocated for obtaining promises and making requests you can make requests mark chapter 11 jesus is teaching here verily verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he had saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he said so he's talking about having things making them your physical possession next verse never forget this scripture read with me ready one to read therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire uh-huh when ye pray believe that thou receive them and thou shall have them so you receive and have in prayer you receive and have in prayer you make the truths of scripture your experience when you pray notice what things soever ye desire so it is not wrong to have a desire hello look up please it is not wrong to have a desire now sometimes you would have heard me talk as though i were trivializing the place of prayer to see that the promises of God, you know, comes to pass in our lives. I'm not trivializing it. I'm only showing the excellency, are we together, of having a passion for the kingdom as being above just needs. I continue to pray and speak that in and through prayer, my needs be met and they are met. Prayer is very important. You can obtain promises. And you can grant that requests are granted. Now, let me show you a scripture that will bless you. May it bless you in Jesus' name. John 16 and verse 24. Jesus is teaching John 16 and 24. Ready? Look up. Please read. One, to read. Hitherto ye have asked nothing in my name. He said, ask, comma, and ye shall receive why that your joy may be full your joy may be there but it's not yet full so there is something prayer does to your results which will help to make your joy perfected when we pray it is one of the ways that we cause joy to be overflowing and full of glory why because in tendering our petitions before god if and when they are granted we are at peace and our joy is complete god does not just want us to have joy he wants joy like life eternal to be to the fullest are we together ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full one last scripture as i studied this scripture blessed me in no small way apostle james is talking now james chapter 4 from verse 1 to 3 james chapter 4 from verse 1 to 3 look at what verse 1 says everybody please look up these apostles were really brilliant people we think just because they were not educated they were dull the holy ghost really made them brilliant people we are the ones who don't understand what they are saying look at james from whence comet wars and fighting this is crisis management apostle james is saying that in any territory the issue of war and fighting and bitterness are we together and all these evil things against brethren will remain he's tracing the root cause why people fight in church why people antagonize one another why did sam buy this shoe why did this one buy this is she the only one that can make a hair james is saying there is a root cause to this bitterness this envy are you getting the context now he's saying they come from your lusts that war in your members 
your desires deep desires next verse verse 2 ye lost and have not that means the reason why most people fight and criticize is the absence of that reality in their own lives james is solving a serious problem here that most times when god blesses others and leaves you the side effect is you will be bitter your bitterness will be routed through different channels through advice through backbiting through a supposed correction but james is speaking by the spirit that most times it is empty people that talk bible we're discussing prayer here are we together don't look at anybody look at me god is talking to us together because i know that when i talk like this there are many people who don't sit down to allow the holy spirit to teach them they begin to nod their head in hope that somebody will hear it no no what i say to one i say to all that's scripture let's go back to this it says ye lost and ye have not everybody say have not the absence of results and then it says ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain cannot obtain you do not understand the technology that makes promises become real to you to your life and then he says ye fight we're back to his his um introduction now and war yet ye have not and he's saying the reason why you have not is not because your neighbor has is because you do not know how to ask keep that scripture there don't rush verse 3 look at this very carefully it's a healing seminar that james is bringing to the church james is saying i have observed you people believers and i found out that the rate of jealousy the rate of backbiting the rate of talking around is saying the truth is that the foundation for all these things is the absence of the results you talk about in your own life what is there in a crowd what is there in prosperity anointing is not everything of course it is not that when you begin to personalize certain things and create a vendetta around it the bible is saying that is a reflection that you are being paid for the absence of that result come this my lovely lady you two come gentlemen two of you come and stand here clap for them you stand look up do you know for just asking this lady to come and stand here and asking this guy to stand here if you are not careful you are angry already now wait it, i'm not saying you are wicked look up look up look up look up yes I'm, I'm teaching us something here this is prayer wait this is a prayer seminar now watch this i asked her to come and stand here notice you started looking at her from head to toe what is special about her the apostle called now it's not because you are evil it's because there is a desire that the highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved the need to feel respected the need to feel appreciated so when somebody is now experiencing something you crave for except god helps you that pain will be there james is solving that problem now come out and stand the lady is happy her thing but notice you are she does not know you you don't know her but notice if i say you too come and join her you suddenly stop hating her so it was never about hating her is wanting to also participate politicians criticize people and fight them and they sit in a round table and say you know what this thing we are going to run an all-inclusive government you will also eat from it quietly the whole case is closed i called this lady and i did not call this guy and he's frowning and looking at me now listen she will attack this lady in many ways number one don't distract apostle he's preaching while what he may say is true it is not about distraction distraction is just the scapegoat to help you vent a pain that has nothing to do with the subject matter 
notice anything i do to this lady now will offend you if i bring out i have some money i hope you are not angry still <laughs> carnality in the house of god watch this how much is this lost the bible has already won that he that loves the world the love of the father now look up please you see this lady she was sitting quietly she probably did not have a vision that she would receive this amount of money and now remember you prayed in your room and say oh god <laughs> listen i'm teaching you something look up look up look up We are still in a prayer seminar. I'm showing you. Listen. You see, you shall know the truth. It's not the truth that is there that sets free. It's the truth that is known. Remember, this is not an issue of hatred. Even you, you are surprised that as loving as you are, you hate someone else. It's not that you hate someone else. It's the reaction that happens to all flesh. That's why the Bible says all flesh will pray. Prayer is a system that helps you to also obtain. Watch this. You prayed in your room. Oh God, let my destiny helper be in Koinonia today. Because this I need support. And God is acting as if he didn't hear you. And someone who is sitting in front. Now watch this. The various ways you can attack this lady is as follows. One, is it not just because worship team is sitting in front? I came earlier and they took me at the back. It, now, remember, it's not the issue of worship team. The foundation, the wall is this. Because you believe that if it was you, you would have been the person to get it. Are we together? So, God gives that, uh, hold this 500 dollars, my dear. And God gives this guy, hold it. Now, watch this. They are holding money and this money is your desire this money is your prayer point in fact quite honestly you have a more legitimate need of this money than them it is more painful if they already have money in their pocket i'm using money for a reason are we together now now look at this my darling baby coming to the front some of you can even be angry with this small girl why is she distracting koinonia it's not so much about her it's about you are, are, are we falling now let me ask this lady now and say go and sit down my dear after service see me and let me give you one big hug from this night her shoe was not put correctly from this night her watch was supposed to be at the other side of the hand from this night why did you tie your hair and, and do it like this why did you do uh, this way left or right now notice those variations of pain is not really about her it is about your not obtaining now watch this if i say ushers bring the basket and they bring a basket here and they start to share one one thousand naira you are now colleagues in greatness do you have your own yes do you have your own let's praise the lord together and listen james is saying that is one way to have peace <laughs> thank you god bless you watch this are, are we are, are you getting the point now you see a rich man pass and say look at corrupt wicked nigerians corruption is bad in this country you are right but the motivation has nothing to you don't even know whether that person is god that raised a destiny helper to bless him all this anointing be careful oh young men like this it takes time as far as i know it takes time for the anointing to come and these people are too young to carry this kind of anointing i will not say anything against anybody but just beware you see those kinds of things as statements they are not about listen when you learn this when people try to talk about you you don't be angry you too you understand that james has given you intelligence that these people are struggling too your result has a side effect on your audience 
We know there's more that's found in you And we will never settle for us We know we know there's more that's found in you And we will never get We know, we know there's more that's found in you. Verse 3 now. Ye ask. Now look, look at this. All other places in scripture just tell us why we don't have. They say we ask. But James broke it down that there are times you can ask and you will still not receive. So that means there are times you did it correctly and yet you did not get results. And he's telling you why that every time you ask and you do not receive it could be because you ask and miss leave all that english we are going to deal with it and he says that the motivation is that you will consume it upon your lust please give us amplified it's in you lord it's in you lord we know we know there's more that's found in you. Now read it. Ready? One, two, read. Koinonia. Or you do ask God for them and yet fail to receive because you ask with wrong purpose and evil selfish motives. Your intention is when you get what you desire to spend it in sensual pleasures. So the Bible says, answered prayer is not only based on the faith of the believer, but based on God's vetting of what that answer will do with respect to his kingdom. That it is possible to ask correctly, but in God's intelligence, he sees that granting you that answer will not make for kingdom come. You can lose it. It's not a faith problem. It's a motif problem. In the school of prayer, it's not only faith that is important. Your motif. Oh God, give me power. Your faith is correct. You are fasting. You are praying. But heaven will not just come to say give him power. They will vet your motifs. Why did you want the power? Why do you still desire it? Lord, give me wealth. Lord, give me influence. Give me a child. Give me a wife. Give me a husband. And God is looking at your desire. Listen, you ask and you have not. And the Bible says because you ask amiss. Amiss means that your motif has already been corrupted. Are you seeing where the dissipation of energy in prayer for many people is not equal to the results they obtain they pray for one year they fast for 40 days and from the first day of that prayer their motive was already wrong lord give me a song you stroll to the bush with a guitar and shout and sing and you don't hear anything why because you said the last time i went somewhere they laughed at me i need to let them know i'm not an anyhow person that motif already god says no if you want a song so that your songs will be a ladder for nations to hear and to cause the fire of revival to come you will not pray for 40 days i guarantee you make reference to my teaching for your glory please but one and two i think the media would give it to you you can go to our, our download portal koinonia download.org and then search for it there and get it for your glory one secret in my life and i will not lie to you i stand by the god of heaven is that most of my desires and my requests are never about i am not the final bus stop to everything I ask God everything I ask God to give me or do in my life I am an usher eventually he's the final bus stop 
Lord, give me a child. Why? Because I'm a woman. No. Give me a child. Why? Because Penina is laughing at me. No. Give me a child. Why? Because I've been barren for 10 years. No. Lord, give me a child. Why? An opportunity to be able to bring a priest on the earth. God says, now you are talking. Now you are talking. Lord, increase my prayer group. Why? Because my brother's prayer group is expanding. And God says, nonsense. There are more important things to be done. Lord, increase my prayer group. Why? Because people think that I'm not anointed. Lord, increase my church. Why? So that I can show people that even from this village, the whole world can see Jesus. No. It looks like it's a nice prayer point. Lord, I just want people to see you in and through my life. And he says, who is this calling me? There is a language that God cannot resist. Thy kingdom come does not mean to say thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom comes means your life is like a funnel. It channels everything into Christ. Prosperity, lifting. For the sake of thy house, I desire thy prosperity. Lord, increase my prayer life. Increase my wealth. Increase my influence. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are we blessed? Your intention and your motives. So there is prayer that causes people to not receive because they ask amiss. And from Amplified, we see that amiss means wrong motives. It means prayer that is born out of selfishness. It means prayer that has an unrighteous agenda. This leads us to a very interesting, um, would I say subtopic that I'll just touch a little and then we'll move to something else. The will of God. Write it down. Prayer is only answered according to scripture when that prayer is within the boundary of the will of God. Please listen to me very carefully that just because you are praying and you are making petitions remember we're looking at part two the second dimension of prayer that in obtaining promises and in making your petitions the boundary of your answered prayer is the will of god very important john chapter 9 verse 31 the b part and then we'll go to Ephesians chapter 5. We'll start from 15 to 17. John chapter 9. God is helping us tonight. John chapter 9. Now look up please. The Bible says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Him he heareth. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15 to 17. Ephesians 5. See then that ye walk circumspectly. The word there is accurately. Not as fools, but as wise. 16. Redeeming the time. Why? Because the days are evil. Next verse. Let's read together. Being ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the lord is watch this that means my petitions and my requests are guaranteed to receive an answer when number one they are from a motive that is not fleshly and carnal number two when they are within the coordinates of the word of god and the will of god if i pray a prayer outside of the will of god it will not be answered are we together come again please come thank you watch this let me use my two lovely people let's assume in this example that this is a husband and his dear wife and i'm a prayer warrior what am i and i go to god in prayer and say lord in the name of jesus christ i don't think that this marriage is correct this is my wife 
and in the mighty name of jesus christ this man something must happen between these two people to give me what belongs to me now the bible says what the lord has joined let no man put asunder is that true and you see that this kind of prayer number one the motif is selfish i'm not thinking about what this man will feel i'm not thinking about what this woman will feel i'm not even thinking about what the children will feel i'm so passionate about my desire to hell with whatever happens to them that kind of prayer is a wasted prayer no matter what is added on top fasting praying seat number two i am praying a prayer that is outside of the will of god now it is true that under certain circumstances you know it can be irreconcilable and these people may get married again and move on like it happened to ruth and naomi with boaz are we together now there are conditions that legitimize marriage again but we are talking in this context a healthy marriage and you are coming now to pray that god will make somebody to live and come to you is number one a selfish prayer it will not be answered there is no kingdom come in that prayer are we together and then number two watch this now it is outside of the will of god this is not how god joins people in holy matrimony it is against his character so it's a wasted prayer no matter who supports you in that prayer number two praying a prayer that your father should die so that you will get his inheritance is a stupid prayer it's not only an ungodly prayer are we together yes it is true that if your father passes on to glory of course you know a good man liveth an inheritance but a man who is alive are we together and you are alive too two of you are alive and you are saying god kill one person and allow one person to be alive so that i will get the money it's a wicked prayer that, that's why james said you kill not by using a knife that is that is murder that kind of prayer lord this our father let him go now so that we will rest because you see we do many things in the body of christ that we call prayer god is purifying this experience of prayer is the reason why our prayer lives are unfruitful and it's the reason why when we mentor so many people in the prayer ministry we find out that their lives are ineffective because most prayer points are a derivative of lusts it's amazing the nonsense people pray only god knows how many things i lay hands on here every end of the month and in as much as i prophesy that whatever is here god will, must answer he is going to vet it there are angels who will check yes this is kingdom come this is kingdom come nonsense this is kingdom come this is kingdom come god is not god is not a fool you don't write nonsense and drop it here and then you expect that just because an anointing came upon it no not every dead body came back to life when they touched it you kill because you want to satisfy your lust koinonia let me teach you something please listen to me one of the things that you must pray for not just in prayer alone is oh god kill self in me i don't know how to kneel down and cry you will miss too many things in destiny when your life is all about you and myself hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be hello him Madonna, hello him, Madonna, I will be hello him, Madonna, make sure that your Christian experience is completely void of self. What is selfishness? the obsession for a thing a realm a result regardless of the effect on the well-being of others to hell with anybody if i want it 
I don't care who dies. I don't care what happens. That's their cup of tea. It is me. It's a dangerous way to live. You will never be a winner that way. Your door remains open for the assaults of darkness when it is all about you and what I want. If it be thy will, <clears throat> nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is selfishness that produces thieves. When you are stealing a man's phone, in your mind, for instance, you are not thinking, this person now, what of the contacts in his phone? Could it be that he's waiting for an alert for a job that will help his family? Could it be the first out of 20 people in the family? You don't care. All I know is phones. Look at the people who steal phones, for instance, not just around here, all around the nation they can literally carry maybe a knife or an axe or something harm somebody the kind of injury that two hundred thousand will not solve and carry a phone of fifty thousand and sell it for six thousand that is the epitome of self what of people who their loved ones die and then they collect inheritance and uncles and aunties say come and sit down here I am your father's elder brother, your mother's younger brother. Bring all the money. And then they take peanuts and give the family and sit on their inheritance. Self. What will make a politician carry scholarship for students? Students that some of them are the only ones sponsoring themselves. And he will carry their entire scholarship and put it at the back of his pocket and live with it. Self. The foundation of wickedness is selfishness. The foundation of wickedness is self-centeredness. That is why the apex, the zenith of love is surrender and sacrifice. Are you learning this now? So the Bible says to know the will of God. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Let's talk a bit about the will of God. Now, I've done a few teachings about the will of God. We are still discussing the second point, dimension of prayer. The concept of the will of God must be understood for your prayer to be accurate and to be rich. The will of God means many things for many people. I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm about to tell you. I've listened to different teachings about the will of God and I've explored, I've studied the Bible myself and I've found out that many things people teach as relating the will of God is wrong is wrong two scriptures colossians 1 verse 9 please it's an anthem here every time we continue for this cause we also paul is speaking since the day we heard of it do not cease to do what so he's talking of prayer here pray for you and to desire that he be filled with number one the knowledge of his will and then in all wisdom and spiritual understanding so a man can be filled with the knowledge of God's will Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 the last verse and then I teach a bit on the will of God Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 ready and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of God what is the will of God the answer was clearly stated in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10 what is the will of God Matthew chapter 6 and 10 everybody read it one to read thy kingdom come It's not supposed to be a full stop there. It's actually supposed to be a comma. Thy kingdom come by thy will being done in the earth as it is in the heavens. So what is the will of God? The will of God represents every action that causes the kingdom to come and causes Christ to be glorified. That is the will of God. Please understand this. In the simplest term, the will of God is not just what is right. 
because the concept of rightness is relative in our world the will of god is any activity and any action let me define it very well number one inspired of the spirit number two consistent with scripture number three that is able to cause the kingdom the influence of christ to come and that christ be glorified whatever activity that revolves within that circumference can be called the will of god please understand this the will of god number one inspired of the spirit number two consistent with the character of scripture number three is able to cause the influence of heaven to be revealed in a life and within a territory and number four it ultimately glorifies christ whatever does not subscribe to these terms cannot should never be called the will of god this is a very powerful teaching are we together the will of god this is the answer whatever has the opportunity to cause the kingdom to come and to cause christ to be glorified and i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men the will of god now watch this most of the main teachings have taught about the good will of god the acceptable the perfect will of god and so on and so forth and those things are there but i i do not think that those are i believe this is my opinion and i i believe it's consistent from scripture that there are only two dimensions to the will of god number one i call it the revealed will of god number two i call it the permissible will of god that's all there is and let me let me define it very quickly i hope you are not confused in this lecture remember we are still on point two are we together the second dimension of prayer but now it has necessitated doing a quick course on understanding the will of god the revealed will of god write this down please the revealed will of god is the will of god as revealed primarily from scripture full stop the will of god as as known to man primarily from scripture there is a reason why i say that please follow carefully god will give us intelligence now that the revealed will of god represents the dimension of god's will that has been made known to man primarily from scripture notice i didn't say only from scripture but primarily from scripture there are other auxiliary support systems of obtaining the revealed will of god one is prophecy one is visions one dreams are we together but the degree of error and inaccuracy in all these other methods is the reason why they all submit to scripture i have taught this that the prophecy of scripture is the highest the noblest and most accurate of all prophecies word of knowledge prophecy like the dispensing of that gift or that office and all other spiritual media for obtaining the will of god they walk but they have a very high degree of error and the errors are caused by many things there is the error of perception there is the error of reception there is the error of interpretation are we together now there is the error that comes as a result of the low level of renewal in the interpreter all of these things together are a mix and they corrupt the purity of the voice of god through all those channels you are safest when you understand and discern the will of god as revealed from scripture i believe strongly that scripture was written so that it will not be changed if scripture was only recorded in a radio it would have been changed by now scripture was written it is written you hardly change what is written are we together that means when i want to explore the will of god 
for his program for my life my first area of search is not a dream look up please my first area of search is not apostle joshua selman to prophesy to you my first area of search is scripture and that from a child thou has known the holy scripture that is able to do what to make you wise unto salvation it is very important let me give you an example oh boy an example of the revealed will of god first timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 first timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 everyone please read ready one to read who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth it is god's desire this is a revealed will of god there is no need asking oh god do you want my father to be saved oh god do you want my mother to be saved your prayer is lord give me the strategy for the salvation not whether he will be saved or not asking god whether someone should be saved is not correct because scripture has already opened his will number two asking whether it is god's desire for the saints to do well is not a will that is hidden are we together now yes jeremiah 29 11 for i know the thoughts that i think towards you say yet the lord thoughts of peace or good and not of evil to bring you an expected end there is the will of god as revealed from scripture this is very important as we prepare to go to the third dimension because you see until you know what the will of god is you will not be able to make certain requests there are things we do as a ministry there are privileges we give to workers there are privileges we give to leaders are we together now it is it is something that has been put on ground the workers the leaders know and based on that knowledge it's not a mystery if they are if the workers are not sure they can go to their heads of department and their executives who help to interpret what has been put down by the ministry as far as their welfare and their provision is concerned are we together now yes for instance in this ministry whatever program we are doing as workers or whatever the moment it is night it is mandatory that under normal circumstances vehicles are around to help alleviate the stress of moving in darkness it's not something that is a special arrangement it is so after this service now there are buses that will be waiting to pick people are we together now now asking apostle do you think that there will be a boss after this service it's unnecessary because that will has been revealed are you getting what i'm saying now the scripture already has the most accurate dimension of god's will his will as revealed in scripture and then demonstrated in christ now listen carefully the bible calls jesus the image of the invisible god and i've taught you here that jesus came as a correction of the perceptions we had about god there were many things we did not know about god there were many things we knew but not properly about god so we look at the life of jesus in his earth work and we learn god by looking at jesus there's no need asking whether god is a god of love we see it in jesus we see how he treated sinners and publicans we see how he treated children we see how he wept at people's funerals so we know that god is love because jesus is was and continues to be loved are we together now god is a giver how do i know that five loaves four loaves little children have you any catch cast your net to the right side his life was full of giving till he gave his life so i know god is a giver so when the bible says he is the reward of them that diligently seek him i trust god because i see that truth of scripture revealed in jesus 
I know that God is slow to anger and judgment. Why? Because Jesus was walking with some disciples and they saw some other people and said, can we command fire to fall? And Jesus said, do you not know what spirit you are of? The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Jesus became a demonstration of that. So nobody will come and talk nonsense and tell you, ah, God will kill you tomorrow, throw away all that garbage. Jesus, greater than any prophet, is a representation of the fact that God is slow to anger. Let God be true and every man a liar. Are we together now? It is the reason why we edit prophecies based on scripture and based on Jesus the Christ. Looking up to Jesus. He can be looked up to. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. That means our journey is with reference to the standard he gave us. There is nowhere in all the 33 and a half years of Jesus that I see him intentionally plotting evil against any. So God does not think evil because as seen in the Christ, it was not there. It is true that he judges, but God is slow to anger. So away with that theology that makes it look like God is chasing every man just to destroy you. It's not supposed to be a license for licentiousness. Don't get me wrong. But that it is consoling to know that we are wrapped up in the love of the Father. Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed. When Jesus saw people who were, who, who were crying in funerals, he joined them to weep. We do not have a high priest who had not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity you know why i teach you this because the days that are coming are coming with too much spirituality and spiritism if you are not grounded on scripture many things will confuse you you will soon not know who god is again because there are pseudo actions that look spiritual but they are not consistent with the christ look up to jesus not apostle joshua selman look up to jesus not a preacher paul only said follow me as i follow christ before you follow me see who i'm following are we together let me tell you this the revelation of god's love in my life has done something to me when i say god loves me i really mean it it's not because of the results he loves me i have an understanding with god not only is he my father this is not about covenant of ministry and this. god loves me i hear the chains falling that's what is happening tonight chains from all kinds of teachings well-meaning but destructive the will of god is that all men be saved and all men come into the knowledge of him it is the reason why in this ministry for instance we do not fight our wounded soldiers we stand for them if people do things and go down we are quick to come you see me preach and it looks like i'm always holding a cane yes i'm holding a cane but remember thy rod and thy staff i told you they don't do the same thing rod is for correction staff is to draw you you need both if you are a preacher and you have only staff you will see the kind of members you produce if you have only a rod you also see the kind of members you produce to totally comfort people you need the rod and the staff hallelujah i love people if you are not growing in love you do not know god and the love of christ is not at work in you it doesn't matter what village you come from we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation are we together we have been grafted into that life of love by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you heal the sick not when you preach love i hear the chains falling let fear live your life I hear the chains falling. You cannot serve God in fear. You serve God in reverence. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. One of the most beautiful times in Koinonia here 
is when we are done with the service and I have to hug my children you see all of them come over me that thing gives me a feeling that I cannot begin to describe no matter how you look at me and no matter what you are holding I turn to my children and give them a big hug they come with their their wet shirt from fighting over Jews and so I still hug them like that I love them behold what manner of love the father has bestowed the love of God is a very powerful revelation many people have exaggerated it and their lives continue to be shredded into nonsense they allow the devil to just come and people have exaggerated the love of the father to the point that they have covered the issue of hellfire hell is still there listen to my message last week hell is there hell is real lake of fire is even worse than hell many people talk about hell and leave lake of fire hell is a spirit hell itself will be relocated to the lake of fire those who are in hell now have not officially started their judgment the judgment will officially start when death hell the grave will be relocated into the lake of fire we don't know who is there but one thing we know is that there are spirits who are there bound in everlasting chains what i just told you is also love use this as a father and see how correct your children will be when i was in secondary school before they flog you they would tell you what you did wrong you will accept that i did wrong they will pray for you then they will flog you <laughs> let's start koinonia secondary schools you will see how we we'll train these children i'm not going to bring this secular demonic babylonian training imagine that you flog your child and he knows what he did wrong just because you prayed for him does not mean you should not whip him foolishness is bound in the the heart of a child the rod of correction not prayer will drive it far from him there is a psychological testimony that your child needs I'm only serving what the chef prepared this night <laughs> remember I told you that I'm only a waiter the principal chef is the Holy Spirit and his meals are always balanced and nourishing say amen. amen so there is the revealed will of God number two there is the permissible will of God let me talk about that very quickly what is the permissible will of God now look up please I will say it then i'll repeat it as you write the permissible will of god represents actions that are within the boundary of righteousness god's character and that directly exalt the christ the permissible will of god represents actions that are within the boundary of righteousness comma god's character comma and directly exalt christ now just because it is permissible does not mean it is necessarily not the will of god permissible there does not mean god is managing it look up please there are things in scripture that are not written verbatim there is nowhere in scripture that is written that you will be in zaria now there is nowhere in scripture that is written that you have five children now please look up there are dimensions of god's will that are not stated directly from scripture at that point we use the tools of righteousness we use the tools of god's character and we use the tools of the exaltation of christ as the compass to help us to be able to walk around that will. these three first then in addition prophecies visions and the rest come notice the bible says the kingdom of god is in talk to me righteousness peace and joy never in visions never in prophecy no the kingdom of god is in righteousness that means god's methodology peace joy in the holy ghost now let me tell you this 
this is the major area where as believers we have suffered a great deal again and again this dimension of understanding the permissible will of god sam has a program in two weeks return to worship now whether or not you had a vision or a dream or god just put it in your heart the truth is that that program if it is done in righteousness are we together if it is done consistent with christ's character and if it will end up glorifying christ it is the will of god that will support the kingdom as powerful as the will revealed in scripture are you getting me now this is where all the other auxiliary things like finding who to marry a job to do there is nowhere in scripture where it is written that pastor alpha marry annie but within the boundary of righteousness if you marry an unbeliever it was not the will of god are we together now but that within the boundary of the will of god you can find a sister that loves god and her life is consistent what is virtue virtue is a reflection of the, your closeness to the character of christ so i don't need to see a demonic sister or a devilish brother and ask is that god's will no in koinonia here for instance if you come and meet me and you tell me this girl that you use for example you like her for instance it can be within the boundary of the will of god if you are a well-behaved brother and you are responsible are we together it's my responsibility to vet you based on the will of god righteousness responsibility love and i can tell you with all the blessings of god and god will stamp it and endorse it are we together there are very few people on earth who because of their lives listen carefully and because of the nature of what they do for the kingdom god will meticulously place restrictions around everything in their life because the role that they play someone like me now you see almost everything about my life is meticulously guided do you know why the reason is because i carry a burden of a generation and the implication of everything i do is generational but that is not that cannot be a template for you it is the price i have to pay for carrying this anointing there is a maximum number of cars god has told me i may never have it if at all it comes and it's more than that you see god has searched my life and he has he has optimized the things that must be in my life for me to be effective that functioning at your optimal level will require this there are people who functioning at their optimal level will require that they are millionaires not billionaires some it will even require that they are not millionaires at all but it cannot be a template for everybody scripture come this brother now can be trusting god for a job lord should i go to enugu or should i go to lagos it is not written here directly the only thing is that the path of the justice has a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day so these are foundations i can take out time if this brother is given a job right now he needs to look at that job does this job compromise on my work with god are we together will this help me to be responsible if it does then within that this gentleman can safely go on that job now if for any reason that decision he has taken is against destiny god will go out of his way god does not only lead by saying start he leads by saying stop there are times you don't wait for him to say start you move if he keeps quiet he's endorsing you if he says stop you return I, I'm, I'm showing you certain things about the will of god oh god should i build a house god is a god of portions it's never his will for me to be a tenant for life so if some money comes wisdom that is profitable <laughs> wisdom that is profitable to direct should tell me buy land and start building 
if it is not the will of God God will show me are we together our precious men here have married good and lovely sisters not all of them saw visions some of them just directly in the name of honesty they saw a sister who loved God they came to me and I said God bless you you may be waiting forever for a dream a vision some occult type encounter now listen I'm, I'm telling i'm using this as a point of contact listen my brother let me tell you i'm saying it is not a you can sit down and trust god look at a godly sister god already gave you what virtue is virtue is not just the ability to cook virtue is your closeness to the character of christ find a godly sister that looks like that when a job 29 man marries a proverbs 31 woman they will give birth to a psalm 112 hope are we together there are people today who god already answered them and gave them good jobs but not understanding the concept of the will of god they are waiting for a vision nmpc gave you a job you rejected it because god called you into ministry i'm not saying it's wrong good good things came to you and you threw it away and god said i've tried for you and you are there now wallowing around and being punished for not discerning the will of god say in the name of jesus, name of jesus. i obtain grace to see to hear and to discern the will of god you are with a, a man who is smoking and drinking and ungodly and you said i would change him you are not in the will of god let me just tell you straight up this night the ministry of transformation is exclusively the ministry of the holy ghost any man that does not change before marrying you will seldom change he will remain that way and any man who changes just because he wants to marry you has not changed whatever a man does to only you he's not really is not a virtue in him if he's kind to only you he's not kind if he's truly kind he will be kind to everybody kindness will so implicate him even if he tries to lie to come out a lady who washes only your plates is not neat the virtue of thoroughness and excellence must spill out in every area i hear the chains falling hey, i hear the chains falling when god brings a destiny helper that is blessed you don't fight him because you have been taught that all blessings come from God through men to men. And if the men don't have what you are looking for, you will not have it. So it does not make you to look down on others. But you pay attention. When Joseph of Arimathea is coming, you pay attention. When Pharaoh is coming, oh Joseph, pay attention. When Boaz is coming, Ruth, pay attention. When Ahasuerus is calling for women, Esther, pay attention. It's how God lifts men. God lifts men by bringing those greater than you to lift you. It's a technology. It's not hidden. How does God increase a ministry? By anointing them and putting the word so that they minister to people. And the people that are built by that word will communicate benevolence. The offering you gave is not going to heaven. The offering you gave is what will pay boss tomorrow. By sounds. So it's not a mystery. The more I continue to be anointed and I bless you and dispense spiritual value. The more this ministry will continue to increase and I will also increase. There's no gimmick about it. So if you are poor and your pews are empty, the problem is the value, not just demons. The knowledge of God's will will help us to stop talking a lot of nonsense. Bishop Oyedeko says, every man's calling is a high calling. Nobody has a low calling. 
everybody's calling is a high calling so if you are failing in your life take responsibility don't say god made me to be small sit down and say why is my life not moving forward this cannot be the will of god for me to keep begging every day as a man moving from pillar to post i am a prayer warrior but in addition i should be blessed to be a blessing genesis 12 verse 2 and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed hallelujah are we together if you get married four months five months your wife refuses to get pregnant don't sit down asking nonsense and say whether that is god's will be fruitful genesis 1 26 be fruitful is his written will the priest that blessed you on behalf of god prophesied to you immediately you should know something is wrong listen obey scripture if you are wrong let god take responsibility are we together a job that makes you compromise on your spiritual life a job that takes down your prayer life a job that cuts you away from the community of believers that can build you you don't need a vision get out of that job immediately i don't care how much you are being paid what shall it profit a man he's talking profit if he gains the whole world and loses his soul i repeat get out of that job get out of that job don't sit down asking should i go pack your load and leave are we together yes you are in a church for instance that is full of manipulation and full of all kinds of things and you see that the character of what is done is not in accordance to scripture there is no integrity there is no godliness there is no feeding of the word of god there is the responsibility of a shepherd as designed by scripture any man who is not doing it is not a shepherd period i will give you pastors after my heart you sit down and you every week everything from you is going you pack your load and get out of that place there is no need praying and say lord should i stay there no are we together the will of god so when i'm praying back to what we are teaching when i'm praying my awareness of the will of god so he's praying father apostle use this lady for example and i just found out that i like her what is wrong with it i'm not saying i'm not saying she's your your your, your, your wife but if god joins two of you we're happy we join you what what that, that's i mean listen god never told ruth boaz is her husband boaz hunger took ruth and naomi they knew they were about to die she went to a field to clean her thing boaz saw her a benevolent man no strings attached all marital processes start with a purified motif that is an expression of who you truly are he said i don't know who this young girl is but leave something for her let her be able to take it back to her mother and god said that's right remember god is looking for those who create the lineage that jesus will be part of so he would not handle anything with laxity because jesus is about to come through that tribe are we together if you come and meet me as a brother and say apostle God is showing me a particular lady. I'll say, let me stand representing what the parents will tell you. Straight up. I'm not even going to waste your time. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Congratulations. Are you a responsible gentleman? Yes. Prove it. There are two kinds of responsibility. There's psychological responsibility where you are getting the mindset that will help you to be serious. Two, there is structural responsibility where now you are beginning to produce fruit. Even if you don't have structural responsibility and you have a mindset that wins based on the word of God, we can stand to say, no, the way you are going, what is in your mind will eventually come.
are you seeing that but you are not responsible you are not under authority you are a careless person you live your life your relationship is like occult nobody is going to give you any daughter at least not not any of my ladies here and you ladies we have created a template to help you if you like don't follow a path that god has created for your redemption and and follow cunningly devised fables until it lands you in trouble see the the, the house of god is supposed to be a place of guidance I don't need to go to the Bible to find out whether it's the will of God for me to go back home this night. As soon as service is done and I'm done, I go back home. Why? Going back home subscribes to the law of responsibility. That every good man should have a home and should go back home and sleep at home. Are we together? Even the madman tried to stay in a place. It's the demons that made him restless. He tried. So men who don't stay at home they are not responsible it's a revelation i hear the chains falling yeah. i hear the chains falling let's tie up this thing so the permissible will of god please look up please the permissible will of God actions that are within the boundary of righteousness if you have to cheat your brother to increase you cannot say it's the will of God you cannot call that favor if you have to bring people down to rise that is not favor if you have to kill to rise that is not favor if you have to bring 250,000 before you get a job hello that is not favor let me tell you the truth no sir it is not favor knowing what the will of god is so the first dimension of prayer is fellowship and growth the second dimension is obtaining promises and making requests all of these that we have been discussing are still under that thank you thank you so much the revealed will of god the permissible will of god the third dimension of prayer that we we'll discuss very quickly our time is gone is the dimension that makes for decrees and spiritual legislation decrees and spiritual legislation i've taught you three dimensions of prayer number one the dimension for fellowship and growth number two obtaining promises obtaining promises and i told you that to obtain promises you must number one have a heart that is selfless number two you must ensure that your request is within the boundary of the will of god then you can ask confidently this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything in his name he heareth us are we together and then number three the dimension of decrees and spiritual legislation now please pay attention this is the dimension of prayer that does not so much deal with talking to god this is the dimension of prayer that deals with rearranging realities based on the word of God please understand this is the dimension of prayer that is concerned with not only talking to God but talking to things talking to circumstances talking to time talking to demons talking to elements of creation to line up with the will of god that's why i took out time to talk to you about the will of god because if you do not know the will of god and the provisions of scripture decree and spiritual legislation will not be possible with you what then do we say to these things i know what god has made for me i know what god says should be in my life 
this is also the realm of prayer where words listen now become like arrows in a man's quiver words are instruments of creation the following scripture ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4 please write down these scriptures these are the scriptures that we must have in our minds when we want to engage prayer as a system for making decrees and legislating spiritual realities ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4 the a part says where the word of a king is talk to me there is power where the word of a king is and then revelation chapter 5 verse 10 just write it don't give us media just write it down the bible says we have been made unto our god kings and priests or a kingdom of priests and we shall reign not in heaven in the earth so i know under god that in christ my words are not ordinary my words are powerful please listen everybody overflow one two three online listen carefully this part of this teaching concerns you seriously number two proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21 i'm giving you a few scriptures that guide you when making decrees and establishing realities in the spirit proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21 death and life help us media we have to rush are in the power of the tongue death and life are not in the nozzle of a gun death and life are not in the stone of a catapult death and life are not in the edge of the sword the bible says they are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof I use words to program life. I use words to program death. I can program life over territories. I can program death over territories. Number three, Job chapter 22 and 28, popular scripture. Write it down, please. Job 22, 28. Thou shalt also decree. Everybody say decree. To decree means to pass as law. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established not unto everybody, unto the one that decreed it. Thou shalt decree a thing. Thou shalt decree life. Thou shalt decree increase. Thou shalt decree victory. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God has already brought them as the redeemed. Let them say so. Are we together? The word of a king. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established and the light shall shine upon your ways. Number three. Isaiah 43 and verse 26. Isaiah 43 and verse 26. Read it please. Ready? One, two, read. Put me in remembrance let us plead together declare thou that thou might test be in other words bail yourself out of that situation bail yourself declare yourself acquitted come out of that situation by making decrease in prayer this family nobody rises in the name of jesus i decree i declare that the horns that keep men down i am exempted the bible says you are you are already breaking the chains you are you are exempting yourself listen let me tell you if you do not declare to be justified then whatever you see you take it like that scripture declare thou declare what Declare thou health, declare thou long life, declare thou prosperity, declare thou increase. This is not just some name it, claim it thing. It's, a, it's an ordinance of the kingdom. It is how we function in this kingdom. 
God is called in Genesis 1, 2, 3, the talking spirit. The spirit that moves by talking. Listen, please do not ever get to a point in your life where making decrease with understanding looks like a basic spiritual thing. You are silent, your destiny is silent. You are silent, every door remains closed. Declare thou that thou mightest be justified. I declare over my life. Sometimes I stand in front of the mirror and I speak. Joshua Selma, you will never go down. You go up and up and up. The light of God is upon you. The favor of God is upon you. It's not every time that I pray that I'm praying for you. There are times I'm praying for myself too. There are times I'm praying for my own destiny. Even when I pray for you, I pray with intelligence. I know what the word of God says. Father, this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I declare your people are prospering. They are understanding. Their minds are enlarged. Listen, it's not every time you talk to God. No. There are times that you stand like Ezekiel and speak to the bones. And these bones live only thou knowest and he says prophesy prophesy he spoke to the bones and there was a sound and it came and all the bones came together but there was no life and he says son of man he says prophesy to the four winds and say thou wind breathe upon this lane and the breath entered them and they became an exceeding great army Isaiah 41 21 the Lord showed me this scripture in 2004 and it changed my life one two please read produce your cause say at the Lord bring forth your strong reasons say at the king of Jacob this is like a law court and you are bringing the basis for why such and such and such should happen to you why should i lift your family why should i promote you bring forth your strong reasons see let me tell you this many people are prayerful but they are wordless is why the prayer is not effective we pray in tongues important we pray to god and we ask prayers but most of our prayers are outside of the jurisdiction and the methodologies of the word it is important see this is the missing link this is where the disciples missed it they were praying amiss you can be prayerful and not get results because you are praying amiss fortified by the word the first dimension of jesus's growth as revealed in scripture is getting the word first then we see him praying we did not have the opportunity to hear what he was saying in his 40 days prayer but at least we heard what he said in Gethsemane. So we know that his prayer was consistent with scripture. If it be thy will. Produce your strong reasons. Listen, believers. Your prayer life is going to be rich in this end time. To the degree to which you understand these dimensions as i approach the throne of grace to pray i know that my prayer life is not all about petitions there is a dimension of it that is tailored for fellowship let me tell you this many times the determinant of what dimension you switch to is often the holy ghost there are times you go with your heart heavy but there are times that he chooses what dimension to be expressed in prayer there are times you go to prayer wanting to decree and bind and cast and God wants koinonia, fellowship. Are we together? Don't resist it. I'm saying this because many prayer warriors have missed it here. There are times you go to God and he, does, he just wants you to be still in his presence. And you are just praying in tongues and his power is just upon you. And you feel that you are not praying because you are not dissipating energy to be heard by another person. Whereas there is communion 
the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the koinonia the fellowship the sharing the participation and under those kinds of most times when god switches to that dimension what is happening to you is impartation most impartations happen through that time of fellowship it is not the binding and casting in that stillness you are about to go for a ministration and you are praying and you are just soaking and for hours all you are doing is lying down there like a dead man thirty minutes one hour and that anointing is on you waves and waves and waves of the glory you stand up from that encounter and go for your ministration and you will see the demonstration of the power and the spirit you will see great grace you will operate in the fullness of the grace that god allocated you ask those who know me when you see me praying and preparing for koinonia especially for miracle service you can be in the living room and you will not hear me sometimes when i'm alone just like that i can be walking around for a long time just walking around next thing i carry a paper i'm writing god is speaking to me i'm walking sometimes god is opening my eyes and i'm seeing the things that he's going to be doing i'm writing and god is revealing things see let me tell you something i'm not saying it's in the bible but it's something that has helped my prayer life try praying in the night minimize light many times when you pray in the night you need darkness to see light it's a mystery that only prayerful people understand help that person running out here i have prayed most effective in an atmosphere where my eyes can see very few things you hear god the distractions are minimal you are not looking and checking and then seeing your phone beep and say ah maybe it's the alert that has come these things are distracting god is speaking destiny things to you you need your attention i love praying in the night of the lights you may just have red lights here flashing green light it's enough for your eyes to see use your your phone that's why you know some of us who just gave our lives to christ now thank god for you but you see we had a privilege of praying well because many times we prayed outside and we prayed in the night when god gives you money and you build a good house build a beautiful garden so not for visitors for meeting with god go back to the garden of eden build a beautiful place and you are praying you are praying fellowship son you have done well it's time to move to the next level do it this way do it this way change this change that yes lord you are praying sometimes it is god that introduces your petitions not you okay you were talking to me about the issue of finance for the ministry um let me tell you what you will do I am going to inspire you and a book is going to come the name of the book is maybe whatever it is and as you write this book my hand will come upon it and it will go to the ends of the earth yes Lord you have received the blueprint you will write a book that does not make sense and it will bring results that don't make sense because you discuss with God in the secret place look at how god came to abraham study god's study abraham's prayer life it was full of fellowship and then there are times that you carry a burden and you go to god sincerely lord we need to talk there are things we need to talk about see let me tell you this do not be afraid to come to god with your needs do not feel less spiritual the truth is that god wants your joy to be full bring the school fees issue bring the your brother issue bring the salvation issue bring it before him 
Lord, why am I still going back to my village in my dreams? I thought I was free. Come before him. He's your father. This attack that I thought left me, this thing that I thought I'd, breaking, I'd broken free from one year, two years ago, why is it coming back to my life? You can come to God in prayer. Lord, why is it that when I'm blessed, I'm only blessed for three weeks, one week, I go back to look like my past. Something is wrong. You can pray. You can go to the God who answers prayers. And then there are times, my brothers and my sisters, where you obtain grace from God, but you need to stand. Can I tell you this? Most of the victory of a believer, listen carefully, will come through dimension one and dimension three. When you do one and three effectively, you will have little of petitions to bring. Spare me two, three minutes. We'll wrap up with rules of engagement. I will show you some of the do's and don'ts in prayers. Decrees are powerful. My day I speak to you. I command my morning. I command my afternoon. I command my evening. Hear the word of the Lord line up according to god's word the bible says this is the day that the lord has made it's not the devil that made it if god made my day let it look good because anything god makes it is good this is how you pray everything god made it is good i remove accidents from my day i remove trouble from my day i decree and declare it is well with me i decree and declare favor comes to me you get into your shop you don't sit down and start calling and say i'm now here no you lock your door i decree and declare even if it's in two minutes i declare that favor comes today by the power of the holy spirit my products are a delight to many they are coming by the spirit of god hallelujah recently god introduced a very great friend to my life wonderful man extremely wealthy man very very extremely wealthy um i'll not mention the name but then we're having a meeting with the man and then he spoke to me and he said apostle let me tell you before my workers start seven he's a billionaire seven a.m in the morning we all pray we have fasting sessions and we pray we declare to god that we have no wisdom on our own i say are you not blessed now away with that nonsense that when you pray your business you you involve god um, you are not being social go to dubai go to the gulf nations and see how these people take their idols and take it. they teach it as part of the ways to succeed they teach you to do your yoga they teach you to do your transcendental meditation they believe that if not for anything it relaxes the mind only believers who are ashamed and afraid of god I'm not saying to go and be praying during office hours. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that you need to involve God in your life unashamedly. Listen, if you are here and you are in business, I'm teaching you this as God grants you grace. Even if your business partner is an unbeliever, you may not just shout and pray, but even if it's under your breath, Lord, this is the day I bless the bread I'm making. I bless my shop. I bless this. I decree and declare. And you will see how your day will look like. Lord, every troublemaker is far from all that I do. For the Bible declares that the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Recently, I had, I had the story of a, a gentleman. This is true. A gentleman who was just sitting down and he got an alert of over eight zeros and two days later a prominent institution in this country just called him and they said they are going to come and carry you to the court we are associating you to a fraud case and he said what is all this did you receive so 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 alert yes sir remain silent until you come there true story 
alert came to my destiny. Do you know what? The account, the money was to be transferred to. I don't know how that happened. It eventually found its way to his account. Most evil, you think that is breakthrough? That guy is in trouble. Because of that thing, he may not get visas to travel again. It is not breakthrough. You want to transfer money, corrupt money, quickly to somebody's account. Then it's my own account. No, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. When I had that thing, I prayed for myself because people bless me all the time. I prayed for myself. Lord, let nobody carry stolen money in this country so that they will now put on newspaper, expose Apostle Joshua Selman is involved with somebody's money. Shout no way. Listen, I'm telling you that if you do not decree and you live your life barren, you can receive 100 million in your church. One year later, you are in prison. Everything that is evil and will destroy you, may God keep it far from your life. But it will not just happen just by talking. Listen, you are the priest of your destiny. You are the prophet of your destiny. I will continue speaking over your life, but you must learn to speak. Speak! As believers, we approach life from the standpoint of victory. Remember that our decree is to establish. Hallelujah. Let me just give you two rules of engagement. I've said it, but our time is up. Number one, rules of engagement. Prayer must be approached from the standpoint of the love of God and the victory of Christ Jesus. Rules of engagement in the prayer ministry. Number one, prayer must be approached from the standpoint of the love of God and the victory of Christ Jesus. Prayer must be approached from two standpoints number one the love of god the awareness of the love of god the fatherhood of god that once i am within the will of god god is not withholding anything to, so it gives me the confidence to approach him and then number two the victory please this is important listen to me believers whether it is warfare or spiritual decrees and legislature you are already a vic a victim if you do not realize that you are standing upon the victory and the liberty of christ that is the basis from which we approach prayer we do not approach prayer to win we approach prayer to establish realities that have already been wrought in the christ the bible says in ephesians 1 and when you read from verse 3 that god has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places listen to me so whether we pray and say i command that cause to leave you are not necessarily listen to me you are taking advantage of the victory that christ has wrought and you are now superimposing it upon the rebellion of darkness rules of engagement David already won before he met Goliath, but he still fought. David already won before his covenant already killed Goliath, but he stood before Goliath to establish it. That's why he said, Goliath, I'm, I'm here to bring down your head, give it to the birds. He's finished. Hallelujah. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain, but your sins was not atoned for by casting it out. Jesus came and died. His dying was not negating what he did in prophecy. His dying was giving it expression. So I believe in warfare. I believe in casting out demons. But my approach is from the standpoint of victory. Are we together now? Please take it down. Let me sing one song. We are preparing to, to wrap up. Um, what's that, darling, Jesse? Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. 
You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. One more time. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Listen to me. Listen, Koinonia. You must approach life like one who has won. You must approach life like life owes you because you are victorious. Now, thanks be to God who always causes us. He's already doing thanksgiving. Thanks be to God. I never approach life to win. I approach life to establish victory. I never cast out devils um, as, as, as the basis of victory. I cast them out because the Bible tells me I already have authority. This is very important. It looks like it's a little issue, but it's a big deal in the realm of the spirit. Listen. You are already blessed. That's why you prosper. You prosper to give evidence to the blessing. Prosperity is manifesting the blessing on you. You are blessed with wisdom. You are blessed with relationships. You are blessed with favor. You are blessed with divine direction. These are true riches. When you engage them and they produce prosperity, it is not when money comes to you that you are blessed. Money comes as a receipt that it is true you are blessed. Are we together? The awareness you own the universe you own yeah. everyone on earth you own that's my father the universe listen do you know why I approach prayer this way I don't approach prayer hoping that God will answer me no I don't approach if it is not the will of God I don't even pray it if I'm confused I inquire in prayer and the spirit of revelation will come and open up scripture and bring the voice of God I only pray when I'm sure of the will of God if I am not sure I pray to know the will of God then knowing the will of God I pray to establish it listen when you know this your prayer becomes rich because every time I catch you praying you should be doing one or more all of the following fellowship or obtaining promises in the spirit or establishing reality whether you are interceding for souls whether you are speaking over territories it comes under spiritual legislation that way you are walking in dominion this is what prayer was designed for we are doing many things today that prayer was not designed for it is the reason why we do not get results your prayer life cannot go down when you see the necessity of prayer you know that without prayer my fellowship will be bankrupt without prayer i cannot obtain promises and without prayer i cannot create a climate of the word of god in my life when do we pray all the time anytime anytime is right for prayer anytime is right for prayer you can be buffing and making decrees my day is blessed in the name of jesus any time may not be conducive for the study of the word because you need the bible you need materials you need time but any time is conducive for prayer i may excuse you for not reading your bible today but i will not excuse you for praying you will need time to settle down and really read and meditate but you don't need any time including when you turn to the other side on your bed you can train your spirit man listen if you are not filled with the holy ghost here with evidence of speaking in tongues it doesn't matter what you believe or don't believe about it there is a dimension of the priesthood of the saints that you may never come into please hear what i tell you this is not some debate it is truth from scripture that there is a dimension of prayer 
tonight we are going to borrow five minutes from our time and we are going to pray we are going to obtain promises and we are going to make decrees is someone ready to change things in your life please rise up on your feet Listen, the Bible says, you have not because you ask not. If my little children here come and ask me and say, Daddy, I want sweet, I will buy them sweet for two reasons. One, I love them. And two, I am able. Now unto him. The him loves you and the him is able to do. The two conditions for making sure your needs reach you have been solved. As far as God's side is concerned, he loves you and he is able. Please listen to me. God loves you and God is able. God loves me and God is able. Therefore, there's no restraint from him giving me the anointing. There's no restraint to lifting me. God loves me and he is able. God loves me and he is able. If I do not obtain, then it means my heart is selfish, dogged in rebellion, and I am praying outside of his will. Can you open your mouth and in the next two minutes, just pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. What things soever ye desire, when you pray, when you pray when you pray koinonia shalabalakata bradagada balako sadabalaya you are praying to the god of the universe the mighty God. Shela Maria Namasunada. Hala Barada Baruta Shela Baria. Please pray, Koinonia. You own the universe. You own. Everyone on earth, you are the universe. You are you are the universe. hallelujah hallelujah obtained promises obtained promises obtained promises what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou received it and thou shall have it listen in the next two minutes i'd like you to receive things in the spirit the things that the bible said 
please don't take casual this opportunity we're operating under an anointing i like you to declare receive by faith in the name of jesus receive mantles receive anointings receive open doors receive favors receive bl blessings receive graces in the name of jesus receive ease That you may receive that your joy may be fulfilled shouts of joy there are shouts of joy joy Shout of joy in my life there are shouts of joy haruda shala barada balakata shout of joy he prato shela baba baba pray harito shkele prakarutia obtain promises obtain breakthroughs obtain open doors by faith in prayer hallelujah praise the lord we're wrapping up now please i'd like you to take this remaining two minutes seriously you are going to make decrees you are not talking to god you are talking to your destiny you are talking to your life are you ready to pray open your mouth and make decrees lift up your heads oh ye gates lift up your heads i command close doors be open in the name of jesus i hold the keys of david and i command the doors open that no man will shut I decree and declare my path is as a shining light it shines brighter it shines brighter unto the perfect day I decree and declare I shall not die I live I choose life I choose life I reject death not by accident not by the soul God is a with favor like a shield. God is a with favor like a shield. In the name of Jesus, I go from glory to glory. I go from power to power. I go from grace to grace. From anointing to anointing. From wisdom to wisdom. Koinonia is like a shining light that grows brighter and brighter unto the perfect day the lord gives the word from this place and great be the company of them that publish it bless your children bless your wife bless your husband bless your home bless your finances bless your spiritual life we declare over Zaria, we declare over Kaduna, we declare over Nigeria in the name of Jesus, rising from glory to glory. Everything I do prospers. 
in the name of Jesus. No failure in my life. No failure in me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. Please listen to me. Your prayer life must come back alive. I'm telling you this. You are here in this place and you know your prayer life is down. You are doing yourself a disservice. You are doing your destiny a disservice. If you are a man here and you don't pray, you will be a bad priest. In your home, in destiny. He spake a parable that men ought always to pray. There is nobody under this grace who should not be a man of prayer. Where did you get that one from? Now I've given you a revelation that sponsors your prayer life. Listen, you have an assignment to find conducive places for prayer. Find it. God will help you. Pray. Make decrees speak over things you buy a new phone don't just plug it and start using it in the name of jesus i declare that within the time this phone is with me it will serve me i will not answer evil i will not listen to evil reports learn to pray you buy a new car don't just enter and drive yourself to your grave i decree and declare the hand of the lord is upon this You pay for a new house or you buy a new house in the name of Jesus. This is the habitation of the Lord. You enter a new shop. I speak peace. A new semester as a student or a new session. I declare. I give this session a name. I call it ease. I call it excellence. I call it recovery. Pray as a couple. Pray with your children. Pray as business people. Pray as a man of God. Pray all the time. Pray these dimensions of prayer. And watch your life continue to rise. Death will come and look for you. It will turn back. Failure will come and look for you. It will turn back. Everything that does not have the signature of the Christ. Will come and look for you and go back. Your life only becomes an unending epistle of wonders. See, let me tell you this. I stopped being afraid of my success when I found out it was God and me that were controlling it. If you do not know that it's you and God in partnership controlling your results, you will fear it. These blessings that has come today, will it ever stay? Ah, will it ever stay? Yeshua Hamashia How dare you ask me whether my tomorrow will be better than my today? Of course, of course, no man's opinion is involved. God alone and I agree with him that tomorrow will always dwarf today. It's a covenant of growth. That Koinonia's tomorrow will always. God will give us peace by all means. Yeshua Hamashiach. See, listen, honestly, and may God forgive me if this sounds like pride, but you see, I love people, I admire people, I respect and honor people, but I submit to you in the name of the Lord. I have never ever desired in my life to replace myself with someone else when I found out God's love for me it's a blessing to be me it's a privilege to be me I'm honored to be myself it's a revelation God has invested his love in my life and protects it jealously like a hen watching her young 
even the egg that has not hatched she still watches it with the same jealousy please let prayer change you most people prayer is not changing them because it's not derived from knowledge if i pray for you rejoice i really blessed you because when i pray he hears me it's not a song it's an experience he does not hear me as a man of god he hears me as his son he hears me as his bride he hears me as his servant he must hear one if he does not hear me as his son he will hear me as his fellowship in the place of intercourse as his bride if he does not hear me as his bride he will hear me by reason of my office so if i tell you i pray for you believe that i really prayed for you i have a privilege as his son i have a privilege as his bride and I have a privilege as his servant i have been indoctrinated about the responsibility of god over my life I'm proposing this to you so that it becomes your mindset today. I never consider myself to be a second class person, not anywhere in the earth. And it's not by this vocal, I'm not mm, a settled conviction. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. When God spoke to us and told us the nations will acknowledge what he is doing, I believed him. many did not believe but today we see what the hand of the lord continues to do through our lives and through this ministry i've shared with you that god spoke to me that i will lose the loins of kings for your sake he said kings will entreat your favor i believed him yes i believed him do you know a day will come it will be a privilege for men to know you it's not it's not from a sarcastic standpoint please find a way of believing what i'm telling you i know your past is not allowing you to believe this i know your present is not me ugly me me uneducated me do you know what it means for a man to receive the investment of the spirit upon him yes the next time anybody looks at you and makes it look as if you're a failure don't fight him just pray for him the next time someone looks at you you put your hand in your pocket and you come out with an empty pocket it's not enough reason to look down on yourself run away from people who demean you and look down on you they are sincere people but they are not good people this is what he has chosen to make us epistles of wonder there is nothing anybody can do about it see let me tell you this is just a step out of the cave keep watching you will watch episodes in your lifetime of what god can do with men he will make us specimens it doesn't matter what message it doesn't matter what proof. it's nonsense when you find a key a door will always open It's not pride. It's the truth. A day will come we will stand. And as those flags float. And you watch the nations crown for an opportunity to touch you. And says you belong to this family. Can I have the privilege? You will stand and say my God. There are bodies terrestrial. And there are bodies celestial. Even among the stars, one different from another in glory. My father owns the world. It's not some childish talk. Oh, mm -mm. I believe it. It is true. Nobody, nobody, nobody has the power to intimidate you. God will cause you to triumph. And get, see, don't belittle yourself. If God wants to use you, tell him yes. I'm usable. If God wants to live to say yes, God says I will prosper you. Don't sit down and say, God, I'm too small. God, you mean me? I will be a man of God's a woman of God's husband, a man of God's wife. Me, I will be a bit. Don't let no devil talk you down. We come from cultures that always like to show we are not important based on vain parameters never call cost 
what God has not called cost. Peter, kill and eat. And he said, no, 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 no. He said, do not call unclean. They may call your tribe unclean. They may call your results unclean. But when God sits upon it, it will produce something that will mentor nations. A day will come, we will mentor kings. A day will come, we will make the word of God alive again. Like the days of Seth, and Adam knew his wife, and she bore Seth, and men began again to call upon the name of the Lord. All hands together, let's run. Yeshua Hamashiach, Hamashiach, One more time. Father, please use koinonia as a specimen to show the nations what you can do with men who are yielded lord use koinonia let it please you O god of all flesh to use the men and women in this ministry and connected to this spiritual family as a specimen lift people out of nothing O god and may they become trophies that flaunt your glory around the earth. Place something upon our lives, oh God, that will cause us to mentor kings and speak your purposes to nations. Place something upon our destinies, oh God, that will cause kings to lose their loins for us. Grant us the grace for cities, the grace for territories, the grace for nations that we will speak your word and reveal your glory even to kings. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, cause us to be your workmanship that is recreated in Christ Jesus even unto good works. Let our priesthood be seen all across the earth let that kingly dimension be seen all over the earth cause our words to be like the word of god let us speak oh god and by our speech let us shift things in the spirit in the name of jesus i pray for everyone under the sound of my voice life to your prayer life in the name of jesus christ I decree and declare life to your prayer life. I shift you to a new level of fellowship. In the name of Jesus. Let there be mighty fire upon your life. I decree and declare that you will begin to command strange results in prayer. Change things in prayer. Rewrite things in prayer. Keep darkness at bay through prayer. Command miracles, signs and wonders through prayer. Open gates for greater glory through prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. Like Solomon prayed over Jerusalem. That every time you pray. May the covenant of this ministry back your prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. The integrity that God has vested upon us 
and upon this work let it also speak while you pray in the mighty name of jesus christ i speak to you tonight command results command strange results results that will dumbfound principalities in the name of jesus christ thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus listen make it a point of duty to pray every day as much as possible pray every day i will advise that at least once at least the laziest person in koinonia should be able to fast at least once every month the laziest person the one who is not serious with his destiny should at least be able to fast once every month fasting should not be strange to you not as a ritual but as a way of opening the gates of faith to rise then shall your light break forth and your health will come speedily as the morning pray often pray as a couple pray get teachings on prayer get worship songs please let your prayer fire go higher and higher koinonia hear me please you belong to a family that prays pray pray like a priest that you are have personal times of retreat everyone here should at least in a quarter of a year in every three or four months i expect you to have at least a day where you should spend time praying just spend time dedicate that day to pray you have some money you can travel and go somewhere to a hotel just lock yourself or beg a friend to give you access to a place just pray be intentional about your spiritual life and no power in hell will bring you down in the name of jesus christ hallelujah prayer is only for people who have handed their lives to jesus the bible says if i cherish iniquity in my heart the lord would not hear me when i pray there are people here please listen everybody there are people here outside the overflows following online who are saying apostle you cannot wrap up this series without giving me an opportunity to make jesus lord of my life our time is fast spent wherever you are we believe you are mightily blessed to connect with the ministry and get more from Apostle Joshua Selman, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Koinonia ENI. To stream Koinonia Live, go to Mixler.com forward slash Koinonia hyphen radio. And download the teachings on KoinoniaSermons.org. For questions and inquiries, call 0814-721-4444 or 0907 